Okay, good morning everybody. My name is Kimberly Potter. I live in the Office of Research and Development in the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, let me go back a bit. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the future of VA healthcare. And I really thank the speakers um, before me to lay the groundwork of what that future might look like. And I'm gonna to talk to you about point of care biofabrication. And I wanna thank Devin and his team for helping us visualize what the operating room of 2030 might look like. And I'm gonna ask you to step into the future 2030, you've had an injury to your leg, and while you're being debrided in the surgical suite, we have an advanced manufacturing suite um, where your imaging data, either from your prior visit to the imaging suite or across the VA network, is downloaded into this advanced manufacturing suite with the help of imaging scientists, bioengineers, a reconstruction specialist. They're gonna start to repair you in sort of a digital space, basically your digital twin, using images from the surgical suite to update what's going on. That computer designed living bandage can then be transmitted to the biofabrication suite where technicians will load the cell, the cell products, the bio inks, the biopolymers, so you can do whole limb reconstruction, basically lay down bone, muscle, vessels, nerve, and skin for whole Whole, org, um, whole limb reconstruction. So that's what we hope to be doing in 2030. By 2050, I think this, these two rooms will be combined, but we're not gonna go that far. Let's go back about five years. What can we do in five years? How about we put a patient's living bone into a bone tumor site? Or what about we use bioengineered blood vessels from patient cells to return blood flow to an ischemic link? What about we make a cartilage patch to repair your knee injury. Let's do that in five years. So by 2030, we wanna offer veterans point of care, biomanufacturing solutions for the customized restoration of health. Put a 3D printed heart there, but we might need another decade to do that, okay? How do we do that inside of, um, how do we integrate that into the largest healthcare system in the country? We're gonna use the VA playbook, build the community of trust. If you have a young individual in your life, son, daughter, niece, nephew, and they sign up in the military, they basically hand the government a blank check up to payable with their life. And they trust that that government will return them home, make them whole. Congress trusts the VA, make them whole. Our clinicians do their best to make them whole, but the injuries, the signature injuries of different deployments sometimes do not have a clinical solution. That's when we're gonna ask our clinicians to engage in the community of science, to build that scientific network to solve really, really difficult problems. You, if you ask any scientist at the end of their career, you know what they would like to leave behind, to say, I'd like to have made a difference I would like to have an impact. But we have to look at ourselves as scientists and say, but sometimes I can't do it alone. We actually do need a community of partners. We're gonna need to partner with others who have expertise we don't have. We have to partner with industry who's better at perhaps manufacturing that new drug. We're gonna have to partner with regulatory specialists to be able to roll out that new treatment. We'll also have to learn a new way of doing that type of science, that kind of team science, collaborative science, open science, open data, transparent data, rigor and reproducibility, so that people will trust the data. But we can't roll out that therapy if we haven't built the community of practice. How are we gonna roll out that therapy in a clinical trial? Um, how do we then make that part of the care paradigm? We need to build the community of practice. And I feel sort of honored and privileged to be part of this huge microcosm where we can do those sorts of things to truly um, work on the future of medicine. So what did we do for biofabrication? We built our brain trust. Here are the pillars of our brain trust in 2021, starting with the you know, um, Office of Research and Development, sitting here in DC, regulated by rules, procedures, we have our own budget, very regulated, human subject K 
careful human subject oversight, and then we meet up with our friends in the innovation ecosystem. Anything's possible. <laughs> yes, the pioneering spirit is alive and well on the West Coast. But this paradox of tensions would not be possible with our, without our friends in the um, Rauderbush VA in Indianapolis and um, the sort of a, the director of the 3D printing laboratory core facility, which is um, generously supported by their nonprofit, the Indiana Institute of Medical Research. What's really important about the middle of the country is this is our industrial belt. This is American pragmatism. This is when industry speaks to their academic partners and says, how do we train the next generation of skilled workers for this emerging bioeconomy? So we pitched that idea, let's build the community of science one year ago. And in the spring of 2022, we, had a, we hosted the first VA biofabrication community of science meeting. And people were like, what kind of meeting is it? We gathered up all our stakeholders. That was the difference. Not only did we have bench scientists, we had our um, biomedical engineers, clinical science, educators, regulators, DOD partners, industry. And then we had folks who had been successful in translating products to clinic come and tell us their story. And we mapped our community on a map. At the end of that meeting, we then decided these are the areas we should really focus on. We can focus on a lot of stuff, but these are the low-hanging fruit. Bone, vessels, nerve, musculoskeletal tissues, and organs. Here we go with organs again. Yes, we're interested in heart, pancreas, liver, and kidney. But I think lung, for our veterans exposed to burn pits, at least we can offer a therapeutic solution. And as you can see, our Indiana group seems to have touched all of these things. But these are people working in isolation. In order to truly get the acceleration, we need to build the community of practice. We need folks working on different solutions to share that information, those processes, those procedures. How did you get through your regulatory process? Can I, can I use the same process? Um, 2024. <laughs> um, and uh, some people are on the map, and I'm sure there will be more. I think what I'd like to say is, I think in kind of summary, in order to reach our goals, 2030, we do need not to work in silos. We do need to, to have an interface and um, integrate our communities of science with our community partners, like our friends in innovation ecosystems, our regulatory scientists, and our community of practice. I've put the National Surgery Office here, and um, this is the Association of VA Surgeons, in order to accomplish our goal, 2030, that is to offer veterans biofabrication solutions for the customized restoration of health. And so I'd like to thank you for your attention, thank you for your support, and thank you for your trust.